So, so I'm just doing this, just drinking this bottle of water. <laughs> water. <laughs> hey there, I'm Andrew Chang. You're watching about that. Uh, why did I just chug this bottle of water? I'm glad you asked. It's to illustrate roughly how much ChatGPT apparently drinks each time you have a conversation with it. That, according to one preprint study, is the hidden cost of AI. All the water needed to power and cool the kind of supercomputers needed to make it work on a large scale. And if you figure, there are like 100 million active ChatGPT users, and each user has, let's say, one conversation. We could be talking about 100 million of these. It really starts to add up. But here's the thing. The exact amount of water consumed may not be as important as just realizing that water is consumed at all. Like, I don't know about you, but I typically think of the environmental impact of technology in terms of greenhouse gas emissions or electricity use, certainly less often in terms of clean, drinkable water. But that is exactly what technology needs. And as AI grows, so does its thirst for one of our planet's most precious resources. The first question you might have is, why would ChatGPT need to use so much water to keep its processors cool? Well, the first thing to understand is how much water everything and everyone uses. According to StatsCan, the average Canadian uses around 215 liters of water every day. That's 430 bottles of water. Some of it you drink and use to cook. Cleaning and laundry also uses a lot of water. But Flushing the toilet multiple times a day, that's a killer. And bathing, on average, it's how Canadians consume most of their water. But then think of industry. It's estimated manufacturing taps into somewhere between 5 and 10% of the world's fresh water supply. So industries like textiles, chemicals, paper, the list goes on. Energy production is another big one. Oil, gas, coal, electricity, water is used at every step. And agriculture is bar none the biggest clean water hog on the planet. 70% of the fresh water we use helps grow the food we eat. But it's still a little surprising that something like ChatGPT demands as much water as it does. So let's explore why that is. I'm here at the R.C. Harris water treatment plant in Toronto. This plant produces 30% of Toronto's fresh drinking water. Now, if you run a data center, this is the kind of water you need, and the colder the better. The water here is pumped in through long pipes that extend several kilometers into the lake. It's about four degrees Celsius, which is basically close to being ice, right? Perfect for computers, which run really hot. Most people uh, do not realize that a computer is basically a radiator. Uh, every single unit of electricity that's consumed by a computer is transformed uh, into heat. So the 100 megawatt of electricity that are, we're consuming is producing 100 megawatt of heat. That's Vincent Thibault. He's the co-founder of QScale. His company operates a large data center in Lévis, Quebec. And dealing with all that heat is a big problem. You know this if you've ever owned an electronic device that got so hot that it shut down. Microsoft says its latest supercomputer built to train artificial intelligence is made up of 10,000 advanced graphics cards, more than 285,000 CPU cores. And each of these CPUs running at full load might get as hot as 100 degrees Celsius. I mean, you could boil water in that environment, right? But running that hot for too long will damage your equipment. So water is actually one of the most efficient ways to keep a room and a supercomputer cool. A good example of why we need to move to liquid cooling, if you're naked in the air at 25 Celsius, you'll feel perfectly fine. Uh, it's actually even going to be warm as soon as you, you'll exercise just a bit, you'll feel warm. 
But if you're in a pool that's at 25 uh, Celsius, you'll feel refreshed. And the reason for that is that the thermal capacity to transfer heat of water is 25 times higher than air to transfer heat. So you can see why having access to cold water is so important, but why do you need clean, fresh water? Well, it has to do with how water is used to cool buildings in the first place. Come with me. So I've got all of my uh, safety gear on right now because we are at Toronto Metropolitan University, which is a place that uses water, a whole heck of a lot of water, to cool not just this big building that I'm in right now, but to cool several buildings in the immediate area. So this is where the magic happens. In just a moment, I'm gonna speak with Animesh Roy, who uh, you can think of him like an energy manager here at the university. He will explain how all of this works. Hey, Animesh. Hi, Andrew. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So this is it? Yep, this is our <laughs> chiller plant. Well, yeah, where, where are we? Explain. So we're in the basement of the library building on Toronto Metropolitan University's campus. And, and what is all of this? That so seeing? this is our 4,000 ton chiller plant that is responsible for cooling most of our campus. It cooled about 2.9 million uh, square feet of our campus over the course of the summer. Wow, okay, so big campus. Yes. How much water is, is kind of funneled through this? I mean, what's in this right now? So there's actually two loops here. That uh, is the more extensive loop that goes throughout our campus, and it holds about 250,000 liters of water. Okay. Now, that's a closed loop, so the water stays in there for most of the, of, uh, the season. This, on the other hand, this loop is open to the environment, and uh, you actually incur evaporative losses, which is how you eventually actually cool the campus. So this loop actually loses about eight Olympic size uh, pools worth of water over the course of a summer. Okay, you have to lose that water in order. You have to. It's similar to how the human body sweats. You, you let the sweat evaporate off your skin, cooling your body. This whole complicated system essentially comes down to evaporative cooling. Can you show me where that happens? Oh, absolutely. I can take you upstairs. Okay, and this way? A, yep. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh, wow, okay. So you were talking about how water is lost during this process, right? like it right. evaporates. Yes, And that's, that's how the right. cooling works. These are cooling towers. That's right. So this is where the evaporative cooling takes place. So the chillers, they basically bring the heat from our campus into the chiller plant, but that heat still has to be ejected somewhere. So this is the secondary loop that works in conjunction with that chill water loop. It takes the heat from that chiller and vents it up here through evaporative cooling. And that's, that's the sweating, like you that were saying. That is the sweating. The, the water that, so this is out. where our campus sweats. Um, so this is pretty cool. They're actually letting us into the cooling tower. So come with me, watch your head. Don't, <laughs> don't want you to get hurt as you come in. But this is kind of where it all happens. And so water sort of pours in from the top. There's a giant fan that, that pushes the water back out and kind of disperses it like, a, like an, an evaporative effect, turns it into this mist. And that's the sweating that happens. The remaining water kind of gets collected in these pools, gets recirculated back into the whole chiller system where it's about seven degrees cooler because of that evaporative sweat cooling. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so, you know, I can understand why ChatGPT or AI needs a lot of water, right? Yes. To keep everything cool. Yes. But I also understand it needs clean, drinkable water. Yes. Like, why would that be the case? Uh, it's because the equipment involved in here is very sensitive to minerals or salinity in the water. Right. So you actually need to have fresh water uh, or essentially clean drinking water to make sure that the equipment runs smoothly. You, you were telling me that, that this, I guess the scaling that I'm seeing. Yes. Wh what's the significance that of that? That is uh, actually from drinking water because even with treated drinking water, there's still minerals in the water. So you actually have to go beyond, take that drinking water, treat it even further to reduce uh, deterioration of your equipment. You know, we, we don't typically think of consumption in terms of water when it comes to a technology, right? We think of it yep. in terms of emissions, greenhouse yep. gases, electricity, yep. but not drinking water. Wherever there's heat for, with equipment, you need cooling and uh, very few things cool better than water. Clean fresh water is essential. We can't live without it. But according to the World Wildlife Fund, more than a billion people on this planet lack access. And almost three billion experience water scarcity at least 
one month a year. Rivers and lakes are drying at alarming rates due to human activity and climate change. By 2025, two thirds of the world's population may be facing water shortages. And as emerging technologies like AI become more powerful, they also, at least in the short term, become more demanding. They join the ranks of all those industries that require large amounts of a precious resource. And if anything is true about AI, it's that it's growing at an absolutely astronomical pace. We've got Brad Bass uh, here with us. You're with the University of Toronto, yes. and you've spent a lot of your life studying green technology and, and water. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me, wh what is it that you think Canadians maybe, you know, sort of fundamentally misunderstand about clean drinking water as a resource? What we misunderstand is the sheer volume of water we use on a daily basis to live. But more than that is a hidden amount we use, the water we don't see. There's more water that's been used to grow our food than we consume on a daily basis. When we don't think about the water, we don't realize that without it, a lot of the other things we do, we wouldn't be able to do. Because are, are we worried about the global supply of clean drinking water? Globally, yes, there's a concern, in part because populations are growing, uh, climate change is increasing evapotranspiration, so more water, is, water evaporates more quickly. But it's just every person requires a large amount of water, not just to live on a daily basis, but to be able to eat. And our phones, our computers, the amount of water required to cool the technology that to allow us to keep using these things is also uh, tremendous. And I guess that technology and, you know, especially I think of, of emergent technologies like, like artificial yeah. intelligence, which may govern everything yes. <laughs> that we do in the future. I mean, how big of a concern is that for you in terms of water consumption? So I'm not concerned when we're standing on Lake Ontario. Right. Uh, we already are using the lake to cool about 100 buildings in Toronto and we're way below the capacity. Even with climate change, I think we, we could add a lot to that. But in countries that don't have the Great Lakes, where they're thinking of hosting the server farms and they have much smaller bodies of water, I would be concerned, but it's not just a consumption issue. That water is now heated and it might be polluted and you're putting warm polluted water back into a clean freshwater river, lake. Uh, so the, the, I'm, I'm probably more worried about that than I am about the actual consumption. So here's the bottom line. It's true that whatever amount of water something like ChatGPT uses on a daily basis, it is a sliver of what humanity uses for everything else in life. But AI is growing. There is very much a global arms race of a sort to find ways to use and apply AI to almost everything from automating work to driving us around, solving problems, inventing new things, exploring new forms of creativity it may all wind up being driven by artificial intelligence. And as it grows in scale, we should just remember that it, like us, needs a drink every now and then. We'll be right back.